wanted to welcome you here today and wanted to thank uh, the Chesapeake or the Bay Bridge Marina for hosting this event for us today. Excuse me. I'm trying to help you here. Sorry, Debbie. Uh, we would like to recognize a few folks that are in the audience. Um, Denise Lovelady is here today representing Congressman Andy Harris. Um, and we would also like to mention that he signed on to the delegation letter uh, to preserve the Bay Funds. Uh, Greg Todd, Queen Anne County Commissioner, representing the Queen Anne County Commissioners. Senator Jim Mathias is on his way. Um, Mark Hoffman, the Maryland Director for the Chesapeake Bay Commission is here. Shantae Coleman from the Choose Clean Water Coalition is here as well. Ms. Romanski uh, with the Eastern Shore Land, representing the Eastern Shore Lands Conservancy. Alan Gerard from the Healthy Waters Working Group. And Dr. Donna Bosch from the University of Maryland Center for Environmental Studies. And I hope I didn't miss anyone. Once again, we'd like to welcome you here today. And now I'd like to introduce uh, Senator Ben Cardin, uh, one of the best friends of the Chesapeake Bay. Well, good morning. Uh, let me thank Kim Credible for uh, her extraordinary work representing the people on the Eastern Shore in our Senate office. It's great to be here with Tom Carper. Uh, I'll introduce Tom in a few moments, but I'll tell you, we have a great leader in the United States Senate as our ranking Democrat on the Environment and Public Works Committee. Uh, we are so blessed in the Chesapeake Bay region to have uh, a person of Tom's interest and leadership uh, in that capacity. So, Tom, I want to thank you for what you've done for the people of Delaware, but more importantly, what you do for the whole Chesapeake Bay region in, in the United States Senate. I'm also pleased to be here with Delegate Sample Hughes. Uh, she is a, a great leader on, in the House of Delegates. Just recovered from this session of the General Assembly. She's looking good. So I, get, I take it that she's already been able to recover from, from, from that. And, and Mayor Jake Day uh, of Salisbury, again, a, a great friend of the Chesapeake Bay and has done a, a wonderful job. I've been with him many times and Salisbury's a, a, a great leader for that uh, municipality. So it's, it's good to be with all the stakeholders. Uh, Tom, as we were waiting for you, and you may have a story as to wh why you were delayed, but I I'm not going to get into that. But uh, we saw a bald eagle fly by. And I think that was a, a symbol of why we're here. Uh, we're here because we recognize that our environment is critically important to this unique way of life here on the Eastern Shore of Maryland. Uh, this area has a great history. And the Chesapeake Bay and the environment is part of the of why this is so special. We know that Chesapeake Bay is a national treasure. It's been declared a national treasure by many, many presidents of the United States. But we know that this unique way of life won't always be here unless we pay attention uh, to our environment, unless we pay attention to the Chesapeake Bay. The Chesapeake Bay represents a trillion dollars in our economy. The Chesapeake Bay represents why we all are so fortunate to live in this region, the, the 17 million of us who live in this region. We know how important it is for watermen who make their livelihood on it. We know how important it is for tourism, for people who come here to enjoy our way of life. And we know it's part of the character of our region. But it's a challenge. It's a challenge. The, the, the Chesapeake watersheds in six states, District of Columbia, many, many local governments. And to be able to deal with the fresh water supplies that come through uh, that are critically important for the Bay. So it has been challenged. We know that. And I go back to my days, Tom, when I was in the state government, as you were in the state government. I was in the state legislature working with Governor Harry Hughes as we brought together the stakeholders to develop the Chesapeake Bay program. It was developed from the local governments up through the states to the federal government. The stakeholders included not just governments, but private people, businesses, farming community, developers, who recognize that we all have to be at the table if we're going to be able to make progress. And we have made progress. As, as we watch the, the bald eagles return to our region, as we, as we watch uh, this weekend, Myrna and I were walking along the inner harbor of Baltimore, and we saw so much wildlife in the inner harbor of Baltimore that wasn't there a few decades ago. Yes, we're making progress, 
But we know we have tremendous challenges that we have to continue to meet. And that is why we are here today, because we are concerned about the federal partnership. We are concerned about making sure that all the partners have the resources they need to make the progress in the future. And when we take a look at the president's skinny budget or we take a look at his proposals, it gives us concern. Yes, the zeroing out of the Chesapeake Bay program is a non-starter for many of us. It's a very important part of the progress we've been able to make on the Bay, and we're going to fight and do everything we can to make sure that those funds are maintained. But, but it goes beyond that. It goes to the attack that we see in so many of the recommendations in regards to science. Science is the key foundation for the Chesapeake Bay program. It's what we base, we base our responsibilities from the local government up based upon what science tells us we can do. And we need to fund basic science. So when the president is suggesting he wants to get rid of the Chesapeake Bay program, or he wants to get rid uh, of the earth sciences that's done at NASA, or suggests th that the EPA should not have the funds to do basic science, or, or the NIH should have its funding cut, all that's related. It's related to what we want to do as a country in developing policies based upon what science tells us we can do to protect our environment for future generations. So that's what we're here for. We're here to say that, look, we're going to work together to maintain the type of tools necessary so that we can make sure that those bald eagles not only return but stay, that the bay not only continue to become a, a better water quality. And when you see the president, for example, repeal the waters of the U.S. rule. Now, the fresh water supplies that come into the Bay are critically important for its future. We have a responsibility to have predictable regulations as to what waters should be regulated. The Supreme Court made that more confusing by some Supreme Court cases. The regulation made that much more predictable and much more sensible. Congress didn't act to define it. We need to make sure that we protect those waters that are coming into the Chesapeake Bay and the waters of the U.S. that affect so many areas around this country. So it's all, it's all those issues that bring us here together. All the state, we have so many stakeholders. Kim mentioned them, and I, I thank them all. You'll hear, be hearing from some. But we need everybody. We need all the help. And our leader on this effort will be the senior senator from Delaware. I am proud of our Maryland team. I thank Congressman Harris for his help on the Chesapeake Bay. I thank Chris Van Hollen for his help as my, as my, I miss Barbara Mikulski and I find it difficult at my young age, I'm now the senior senator from Maryland, but it happens. But the, the senior senator from Delaware has been a great leader on these issues his entire career as a senator, as a congressman, as a governor, and now he has the key position in the Democratic caucus to provide the leadership. I, I saw his, his leadership as we were uh, going through the nomination of the EPA administrator, focused the United States Senate on the critical challenges that we're going to have in the Environmental Protection Agency. I'm very proud to be his friend. I'm very proud to have him as a colleague in the United States Senate. And I can tell you we're very fortunate to have his leadership on these issues. Tom Carper. Please remain standing. <laughs> I want to start off by saying uh, thanks, uh, thanks to Kim for doing a lot of work to, uh, to get us here. And uh, Kim, uh, raise your hand. Let's give her a nice round of applause. Kim, good work. And Karen McGrath and folks and, and our team as, uh, as, as, as well. I want to thank the good Lord for uh, it's cloudy skies, but so far not much rain. We came through a real uh, downpour on our way down here from, uh, from Delaware. And we're just glad that uh, there's no rain, and we're glad that all of you are, are here. I, I want to say to, uh, to our mayor, uh, Jake, this is, a, this is a daily day for me, day day, because I, not only are we here with, uh, with him and 
and the, the delegate and, and the president and uh, my, my buddy uh, Ben. But uh, today I get to have uh, this press conference with him and lunch with his dad. So, uh, and he's going to be announcing that uh, Purdue is moving to Delaware. No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> not really. Sadly, no. Sadly, no. But uh, it's great to be here with all of you. Ben is my neighbor. Ben is my neighbor. He's been my friend for a long time before. And we've been neighbors for a, a long, uh, long, long time. He, uh, he's not just my neighbor from Delaware and Maryland being adjoining states, but he's also uh, my neighbor on the Finance Committee. And we uh, sit, uh, sit uh, next, uh, next to, uh, to one another on the Finance Committee. And after a number of uh, years, he sits on my right. And on the, uh, the uh, Environment Public Works Committee, he sits on the other side of, of me. So he sees a lot of me. We have some weeks where we see more of each other than I see of Martha and he sees of Myrna. But uh, it's a great partnership and uh, a great friendship as, as well. He leads, he's led for years on the Environmental Public Works Committee the efforts to not just to clean up, uh, continue the clean up of Chesapeake Bay, but frankly, the Delaware Bay and a whole lot of other waters all over the United States of America. Put your hands together for him. He is one <laughs> terrific leader, terrific leader, not just for Maryland, but for, for our nation, and just a whole lot of, a whole lot of fun. I, uh, Sure, sample use. Uh, I, I don't know if you're related to former governor use, but uh, <laughs> we'll talk about that later. <laughs> but uh, great to uh, great to be here with, uh, with you. And in a minute, I get to introduce the uh, the president. I don't get to introduce the president every day, but this one will be a pleasure. And I get to introduce Will uh, Will uh, Will Baker. I um, we're just coming off of Easter and Passover, and uh, I don't know if we have anybody that uh, uh, celebrated either of those. Uh, uh, religious holidays, but uh, if you look in the uh, the uh, Bible, you uh, come across something called the Golden Rule. It shows up again and again and again. If you uh, look in the, uh, the Torah, you come across the same thing. And in fact, if you look at every major religion in the world, they all have a Golden Rule. I don't care if it's Muslim, I don't care if it's Buddhist, Hindu, you name it. Every major religion has a Golden Rule. Treat other people the way we want to be treated. And uh, there, in the New Testament, there's a story about the, uh, uh, the, the Good Samaritan, like, who is my neighbor? And then uh, Jesus tells the story about the, uh, the good, uh, good Samaritan. I was uh, approached by somebody, this was before Ben came to the Senate, but when I was governor of Delaware, approached from some of our colleagues in, in Maryland, he said, you know, the uh, Chesapeake Bay is in bad shape. The folks who make their living from the Chesapeake Bay are finding it hard to, uh, to do that. And uh, you in Delaware are complicit, complicit in our hardship. And I said, well, tell me more. He said, the reason why is because uh, you raise a lot of chickens. Well, they raise a lot of chickens in Maryland, too. We raise more chickens in Sussex County, Delaware, than any county in America. And uh, the chickens live in chicken houses. And we, uh, they eat soybean, they eat corn, and they eat a lot of it, and they make a lot of chicken manure. And uh, every couple of, uh, twice a couple, maybe twice a year, the uh, farmers uh, empty out their poultry houses and they remove the, we call it uh, chicken litter, and they put it out in, for years they put it out in, in farm fields. And when it rains, uh, like it maybe we're going to rain here later today, the rain comes down, the uh, piles of chicken manure are uncovered, the rain uh, washes the, uh, the parts, uh, portions of the chicken manure into the ditches, into the streams, into the rivers, and eventually into the Chesapeake Bay. And you have a lot of phosph phosphorus and nitrogen that uh, you don't need. They don't need it in the, this bay, or they don't need it in any bay at, at, at all. We were complicit because we would simply pile this stuff up and we would spread it out in far fields all over Delmarva, all over Delaware. And we uh, didn't care how thickly or how thick it was there. We, you know, we had a lot to spread out and we spread it. And uh, we did uh, great damage to, uh, to your, uh, to your uh, bay. It's really to our bay as well. And uh, lo and behold, uh, my le next to last year as governor, we met with the, uh, the farmers. And I told them the story of the, uh, the Good Samaritan. And I said, how would we like it if the folks over in Maryland were doing things in their environment, polluting over there, that under, uh, undercut our ability to make a living? How would we like that? We wouldn't like it. Well, that's exactly what we're doing to them. And we need to do something about it. And so what happened is the uh, farmers said, oh, you, you're right. And they created, with our help and guidance, something called the Nutrient Management Commission. 
And the Nutrient Management Commission says, anybody that's going to be spreading manure, chicken manure on farm fields in Delaware, you have to have a plan, you have to be certified, you have to maintain and adhere to the plan. We've been doing that now for 20 years. We partnered with Purdue, some state money, per, Purdue company, uh, and we built a, a facility that actually can take uh, chicken litter, treat it at high temperatures, and turn it into an organic uh, fertilizer, pelletize it. We sell it all over. They sell, they've been selling it for 20 years all over the country. That's the kind of thing that a good neighbor will do. And the uh, last thing I want to say is the role of government, the role of government is to do for the people what they cannot do for themselves. Maryland could not solve this problem by themselves. They needed Delaware's help. This is a watershed. There's about 64,000 square miles. How big is that? 25 times the state of, size of Delaware. That's how big it is. Take a little Delaware and multiply it by 25 times. That's how big this watershed is that, that we're protecting. It's not just Delaware that participates. It's Maryland. It's New Jersey. It's Virginia. It's the District of Columbia. We're all complicit in this. We all have a, a role to play in cleaning this, uh, this uh, beautiful body of water up. The good thing is it's working. All these collective efforts are working. And I like to say, uh, find out what works, do more of that. Well, what we're doing with Ben's leadership and help a lot of other people, it is working. And the, 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 this administration with their budget would say, well, let's walk away from what's working. Let's walk away from what's working in terms of climate change. Let's wa walk away from what's working with respect to clean air. And let's walk away with what's working with respect to the Chesapeake Bay. And uh, do you know what I say to that? I was in the Navy for many years. I will not repeat. Uh, some words I said, learned to say in the Navy. But you get the, uh, the, you get the, uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, the drift. Uh, we're not going to go back. We're not going to go back. We're going to continue to go forward. And we're going to go forward together. And these uh, programs, you know, the president gets to propose uh, eliminating uh, programs like the Chesapeake Restoration Bill. He can propose that, but at the end of the day, the Congress disposes. When they wrote our Constitution up the uh, road in Philadelphia not that long ago, they wanted to make sure we did not have a king. Remember that? They didn't. They want to make sure we didn't have a king. And they created a system of checks and balances. And the president can propose. At the end of the day, we will uh, make sure that uh, those checks and balances and the legislative branch does its job. And at the end of the day, we'll end up with a, a bay and continued progress we can all be proud of. And uh, an economic, it's an economic engine. An economic engine, a huge economic engine. We want to make sure that that engine runs even better. All right, I've said my piece, but I haven't had a chance to, re to represent Will Baker. Thank you. I haven't had a chance to, to introduce uh, Will Baker. It's not every day I get to introduce a president. I'm happy to introduce this president. Give him a nice round of applause. Will Baker, president of the Chesapeake Bay Foundation. Come on, Will. And Will said to me he was glad I didn't wear a coat or a tie. So, so I dressed down. But I feel good. Uh, Senator Carper, that was wonderful. Senator Cardin, thank you. Sherry, De Delegate Cherie, Sample Hughes, Mayor Day. It's a great honor for me to be here. Listen, for me, this is personal. I've been doing this work for the Chesapeake Bay Foundation for 40 years. Next to family, it is the most important thing in my life. And there are people on the board of the Chesapeake Bay Foundation and on our staff who have been doing it longer than I have. This is personal for the Chesapeake Bay Foundation. The Chesapeake Bay defines us. For all 18 million people who live in the watershed, the Chesapeake defines us. It is central to our history to our literature, to our culture, and certainly to our economy. There's a one-of-a-kind state-federal partnership in this country, and it's the state-federal partnership that has been successful for over 30 years in bringing back the Chesapeake Bay. Judge Sylvia Rambo, a federal judge in Pennsylvania, said the partnership between the states and the federal government is the closest thing to a cooper to cooperative federalism she has ever seen in United States history. It's working.
It's bipartisan. It's non-controversial. It's science-based. And it's a partnership. The federal partner must not quit now. We must not let the federal partner quit right as it's starting to work. Clean water is a right. I think both Senator Cardin and Carter Carper said that. Nowhere is it more important than here on the Chesapeake. The effort to save the bay is so valuable, so important, certainly for a healthy environment. But it's critical for human health and it's central to the economy. And now, before I wrap up, let me quote President Ronald Reagan. He recognized the need for significant EPA support. He knew that the Bay States could not get the job done by themselves. And so in his 1984 State of the Union message, he said the following, though this is a time of budget constraints, sound familiar? Though this is a time of budget constraints, I have requested for EPA one of the largest percentage budget increases of any agency. We will begin the long necessary effort to clean up a productive recreational area and a special national resource, the Chesapeake Bay. That was federal leadership of the finest sort. So today, the Chesapeake Bay Foundation wants to make it very clear that the $73 million threshold for the EPA Bay Program, which funds so many valuable pollution reduction projects at the state, local, and municipal level, which funds incredibly valuable monitoring and other research, so we are flying with instruments, not flying blind without instruments, that $73 million, which has been cut to zero in the current proposed budget, is not enough, and it never has been. Today, the Chesapeake Bay Foundation urges our president, our congressmen and women, our senators to shoot for a budget mark of $100 million for the Chesapeake Bay so we can have this bay saved in our lifetimes. Thank you very much. Now, it's my honor to introduce Delegate Cherie Sample Hughes. Delegate Sample Hughes. Good morning. It certainly is a blessing to be here on today. And I'd just like to say a thank you, big thank you to our esteemed leadership, the colleagues, as we transform, as we transform in the movement to know that this issue is extremely, extremely important. This morning I stand before you as a humble servant toiled with the laborers on my back, the persons who have served on the waterways and the byways to ensure that our community is a much cleaner community, that our bay is a much cleaner place for us to show the love that we have for our young people. And as a mother, I must say that I stand here before you today to recognize the importance that we must have a community that is reflected of what we believe in. The Senator said just a while ago that we must be a good neighbor. And we can only be a good neighbor if we dig down deep and believe in what we truly believe in, which is to ensure that our community is strong, our county is strong, our municipality, our state, and our neighboring states are strong. We just closed the chapter on the 437th legislative session in Annapolis just on last Monday at midnight. And I must tell you, the Bay was at the forefront. It was at the forefront through the joint resolution that we passed, joint resolution number 10. It was indicative of the importance of what this Chesapeake Bay means to the state of Maryland. And I stood proud and I stood tall to vote for that resolution because I understood and understand the daily importance that it shows for us. 
Now, we have heard over the time that the Chesapeake Bay has improved, and yes, it has. And it's very noteworthy and it is a blessing. But we can't rest on our laurels. We know that we have to do more. We know that it's important for us to keep moving forward and to make it right for our fishermen, our oystermen, many others, our tourism industry, and so on and so forth. We have to make it right because that's the right thing to do. I also want to recognize that while we look at these proposed cuts and we understand the significance of it, that oftentimes what we fail to think about is the unintended consequences. We also must recognize that we have our higher education institutions that use the data that comes from the Chesapeake Bay Foundation and the other programs that are out there. They thrive on that information because they are of learning minds, but they are getting the information that we need to once again make our community stronger and make our community better. So when we look to our institutions of higher education, they know that they must be equipped with the financial resources. They must be equipped with the information. And we are standing here today along with each one of you who believe in what we believe in to know that they need their funding support as well. I just also want to recognize our long-standing partnerships that we have in this endeavor. We have the six watershed states, and we have our counties and our municipalities. And we know it's important for our municipalities, as Mayor Day will share with you, that it's important to be able to leverage the funding for our wastewater treatment plants and the counties to be able to uh, appreciate and participate in the various programs to strengthen our communities, our rivers. Each and every day I look at the Wicomico River and I know that that is an important river as it comes just straight from our Chesapeake Bay and know that it needs what it needs. So I stand before you today as, again, a humble servant, but someone who is poised and committed to this effort and who will continue to stand with our leadership and know that we can make a difference and will stand tall as we stand against a lot of uh, uh, anxiety, as we stand against a lot of uh, negativity. But we know at the end of the day that it's important and we're going to do it. We're going to get the job done and make sure that the Chesapeake Bay and our communities are strong and continue to thrive. And with that being said, I must recognize our thriving mayor in the city of Salisbury, Jake Day, as he shares with you the importance of the municipalities and how it is impacting our community in the city of Salisbury. Well, good morning. I'm gonna let Alan fix that first. Thank you. Um, so I'm proud to stand with four leaders today. I I'm proud to stand with, uh, in particular, two people who, let me say this, I'm a mayor of a small city. I walk down main streets. I walk down streets in my neighborhoods. And it's easy to say, well, my representatives in Washington aren't fighting for me. What are they doing for me? Well. Look no further, citizens of Maryland and Delaware, than your Senator Cardin and your Senator Carper, who are saying, <laughs> who are saying, I'm gonna stand up not only for the people of my community and my state and my district, but I'm gonna be in Washington fighting for an entire region and fighting for an entity that has no voice unto itself, so we've gotta have one for it, the Chesapeake Bay. So as I said, my name is Jake Day. I'm the mayor of Salisbury, Maryland, and we call ourselves the capital of the Eastern Shore. And, and we don't do that out of ego. <clears throat> no, that comes from pride. We're proud of this place. We're proud of our, our position in a geographic region that is special, the Chesapeake Bay. Salisbury is America's seventh fastest growing job market and Maryland's fastest growing city. And we could easily just kind of rest on our laurels and say we're happy and we'll tell that economic story over and over again and, and we don't care about the Bay. But you know what? I think the reason why we're seeing that success, the reason why people even come to our city is because of where we are. It's because people are once again choosing to live and play and visit a place that has taken care of itself unlike it did for centuries, unlike it did for decades. 
we're two and a half hours from the bustling of Washington, D.C. Or, or Baltimore or Philadelphia or Norfolk. It's a quiet place, but it's a place that's special and beautiful and different. And we've seen some years that are good, some years that are bad. We've got wet and dry years. We've got years that the Wicomico River sees high levels of bacteria or high levels of nitrogen or phosphorus or high levels of sediment. But we know that when our president says, this program's not working, we say, on the contrary, that's not true. The trajectory, the arc of the health of the Chesapeake Bay is getting better. This program is working, and it's working for us in tangible ways. And it's precisely because of federal involvement that it is getting better. Whether it's in Salisbury or La Plata or Aberdeen or Dover or Dewey, these cuts are reversing the tremendous environmental gains that we have seen. And this is the moment that we should be doing more, not less. In Salisbury, $75,000 right now through the Green Streets, Green Towns, Green Jobs grant is helping to revitalize our Main Street and to keep stormwater, polluted stormwater, from reaching the Wicomico River. $67 million from the Bay Restoration Fund right now is rebuilding our wastewater treatment plant and reducing by 90% the impact of nutrients into the Wicomico River and the Chesapeake Bay. Look, I get it. To a political activist, the Chesapeake Bay Restoration Program is but a, spe a special interest. But to the people who visit my city and to the more than 18 million people of the Chesapeake Bay watershed, this is our food, our water, our home, and our culture. I get that to a budget analyst, the Chesapeake Bay is really nothing more than a percentage point. Nothing more than something to cut. Nothing more than a fraction. But to the farmers and families of our region and of the Eastern Shore, it has been the tool that has reversed mistreatment of our most precious asset. And to provocateurs, the EPA is but an example of government overreach. But to the crabbers and oystermen whose industries disappeared thanks to pollution that went unchecked, their revival and the return of the healthy blue crab and oyster populations to the Chesapeake Bay is thanks to a committed and serious environmental protection effort. And the EPA is a group of warriors. And in my short time in public leadership, and yes, it's been short, I've learned something. And that's that absolutes don't really exist anywhere but in theoretical mathematics. And to those of you who know me well here, you're gonna laugh because I have a tenuous grasp on mathematics. But the absolute deconstruction of the efforts of the EPA, the restorative action of the Chesapeake Bay Restoration Program, and the lifeblood of our region, the Chesapeake Bay itself, it is bad for the people of Salisbury. It is bad for the people of the Chesapeake Bay region. It is bad for the people of Maryland and Delaware, and it's bad for America. And I encourage, I urge, and I insist that the appropriators, the colleagues of Senators Cardin and Carper, say no and reject these cuts and heed the call of the Chesapeake Bay Foundation and President Baker in restoring these cuts, excuse me, in restoring the funding to $100 million for the Chesapeake Bay Restoration Program. Thank you. Mayor Day, thank you for really underscoring the importance of the Chesapeake Bay to our economy. To Delegate Sample Hughes, thank you for how you related the different programs as you were speaking. Of. Recall the last time I was at Goddard looking at the earth science research that's being done at Goddard through NASA and what impact that has on the Chesapeake Bay. It's a direct result of direct information being used to help us understand the science of the Chesapeake Bay. And to Will Baker, thank you for underscoring that we in this region have not just the largest estuary in our hemisphere, we do. But we also have the largest effort in this country to deal with a multi-jurisdictional body of water. It truly is the model for our nation on how to put together a successful effort to combat a very incredibly difficult challenge of keeping our bay clean. And I, and I do thank you because the standard that we will use, and Senator Carper and I will take this message to our colleagues, 
when you use the yardstick as to what the appropriators should do in funding the Chesapeake Bay program, the yardstick should be $100 million. That's what's needed, and certainly not zero. And we'll fight to make sure that we get the maximum appropriation for the federal partnership. With that in mind, we'll be glad to take Senator Carper. We'll be glad to take any tough questions. I'll be glad to take any easy questions. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't hear it. Well, uh, 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 Will Baker mentioned how the Chesapeake Bay program is used for grant programs that deal with pollution. It gives us the coordination and science that we need in order to make sure that we have a coordinated effort and all the stakeholders are confident that the programs that are being developed at the state level really reflect all stakeholders being part of the answer and that's what's done by the chesapeake bay programs but there are a lot of other programs out there i just i mentioned the earth science being done by goddard which is affects the chesapeake bay uh we have a we have the the uh, grant programs that deal with uh treatment of, of water that's another important part of the bay program uh there are numerous pro the farm program the the conservation programs deal with the chesapeake bay so there are a lot of parts that funnel into the federal government's partnership, but what we're focused on primarily right now is the Chesapeake Bay program itself, which the president's budget would eliminate. Let me, uh, let me, let me try to give you uh, let me try to give you some uh, some specifics. The uh, administration has proposed uh, to completely eliminate seventy three million dollars from Chesapeake Bay uh, restoration. The, uh, the administration has uh, also gone after uh, the uh, uh, U.S. Department of Agriculture, uh, ag, uh, uh, rural development uh, uh, monies that uh, to reduce by about, I want to say by about a half, by about a half. The uh, it's a program uh, called uh, uh, Section 319, which is uh, controls uh, pollution from non-point sources, think of runoff and that sort of grease and oil and stuff on, uh, on roads. But uh, they uh, uh, proposed uh, reducing that by uh, about half as well. Uh, state, uh, state grants for water pollution control systems funded about $230 million uh, for the last uh, fiscal year. Again, uh, cut in just about in, in half. So uh, these are not small cuts. These are not the nickels and dimes. These are huge, massive, massive cuts. In some cases, outright elimination of these programs. I just want to add one other thing to this. The, uh the University of Maryland system plays a very important role in Maryland in our efforts on the Chesapeake Bay. We're going to be meeting with Bob Caret, our delegation, and one of the questions we are asking him and he's prepared for is what the president's budget would mean in regards to their capacity to deal with this issue and other issues. It's very much adversely impacted if that budget were to become uh, enacted by Congress. I agree with Senator Carper. We're not going to pass the president's budget. But we don't want, even want the president's budget to be used as a yardstick for what we do in the United States Congress, so, because it is so detrimental to not just the Chesapeake Bay, but so many of our environmental issues. I think Ben mentioned earlier, this, this administration has declared war on science. This administration has declared war on science, sound science. There used to be a song by a guy named uh, Thomas Dolby. You sing a song, pretty popular song. I remember, remember Thomas told me, you sang a very popular song. What was it called? She Blinded Me with Science. Well, uh, we, uh, we feel uh, we need to be guided by science. We need to be guided by science. And the, uh, the folks who are being blinded uh, are those who want to, uh, to disregard the science that we've invested in for years. Thank you all very much. Appreciate it. Uh, thanks, everybody. Thanks.